Ammais Farnam! Make some noise for Sunil one more time, guys. Come on, come on, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. What's happening, guys? Something happened, you're like, I'll send the English comic now, okay? <laughs> I guys, I came all the way from Bangalore, you fucking laugh, okay? <laughs> Oh, fucking flew for this shit, okay? You laugh, okay? Uh, don't cover your mouth and laugh, okay? Laugh out loud, it's a comedy show only, okay? Uh, uh, my name is Arnav. If you don't know me, I'm the first person ever in history to come last on Comic Stan. Okay? <laughs> no, no, that's a wrong reaction. Don't clap for that, dude. What the fuck? What are you celebrating my failures for, dude? Some of you don't know what Comic Stan is? Good, that means you have a life. <laughs> For those of you who've seen the show, my condolences, okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, dude, if you don't know what it is, it's a reality competition of stand-up. And in 2018, season one, OG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, in 2018, I was in the top 10 comedians of this country. <laughs> no, no, no. I have to say that because I came 10th. <laughs> Out of 10, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I brought national level shame and embarrassment on an international streaming platform, dude. <laughs> uh, the only reason I came last also was just before the show, I had had like a breakup, okay? And my ex told me also, just as you were breaking up, she told me, Arnav, you can't always come first, okay? And I was like, oh. <laughs> she was like, nice guys, finish last. I took that advice to heart, okay? <laughs> Dude, all I got out of that show was three t-shirts, two water bottles and one stalker, okay? <laughs> Dude, like, yeah, I had, I had a stalker. She lived in Bangalore, I live in Bangalore. It was convenient at the time <laughs> for her to stalk, right? I didn't even know she was a stalker. I thought she was a fan because she just kept coming for shows, okay? And she'll bring friends and all. And I can't complain, no, because Ticket sales are ticket sales. <laughs> She's buying the tickets, dude. How can I complain? Then she started doing this thing where she wouldn't buy tickets. She just turn up outside the venue and then be like, oh my God, <laughs> what are the chances? What are you doing here? I'm like, hey, <laughs> I advertise my physical location. Okay, this, you, this, you can't act this out, okay? One day she DM'd me, okay? She DM'd me on Instagram. She's like, what plans today, okay? And I replied, I was like, uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm staying at home, which is true. I was staying at home. And then an hour later, I get a call from this comedy club saying, hey, there are two spots available. Can you come and do them? I'm like, yeah. So I go, I'm hanging out with comics. We're drinking at this club. There are two shows. And then I get a DM from her saying, you told me you were not going out of the house. Why are you at the club? And I'm like, oh, fuck, where is she? Okay. And then we're on the first floor of a balcony of this club. I can see from the, uh, from the balcony, on the other side of the road, Behind a telephone pole, she's just standing there, okay? And the only reason I know it's her because the light of her phone is on her face and she's like that, okay? <laughs> and I'm, I'm with a bunch of comics who are drunk, okay? So like idiots are like, ah, come join us. <laughs> she comes, <laughs> she's now drinking with us and dude, genuinely really sweet lady, okay? Very sweet lady. And then she was like, listen, I have to tell you something. I think that you should know that physically and cyber, I stalked nine other dudes. Oh. Every comic was like, oh, he's 10th here also. <laughs> so, it's a rough life to it. And still, I still get DMs from people like, I want to be a comedian, how to become a comedian? I'm like, you want this life? Huh? <laughs> Right? And so, I, I can't answer how to become a comedian. I can tell you the story. If you, do you want to know the story of how I became a comedian? Yeah. 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 Good. See, that's the illusion that I've given you control. <laughs> I was going to tell you the story anyway. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> I asked for consent. <laughs> that's in fourth standard. Yeah, going all the way back. Okay. Fourth standard is when I told my parents that I want to become an archaeologist. Okay. And my parents were fully supportive. They're like, wow, yeah, yeah, do, do. They, they were like, he wants to do something that involves reading. Mm, just don't fight it. <laughs> they had no idea. The real reason was because my friend had given me the video game of Indiana Jones, okay? <laughs> I thought archaeologist meant I'll get one hat, one whip and one gun. I'm like, archaeology. <laughs> I didn't know how to read history for this, okay? I, I, any, any, you guys look like your parents? You have kids, sir? You, you only, sir. Who else? No, no, no. Oh, you have no, nobody has kids here? Good, don't have. 
<laughs> and if you do have don't send them to school okay don't don't i know my nephews in the audience don't okay <laughs> don't send them to school that's dumb okay why would you entrust your child's fragile little mind in the hands of some bigoted stranger okay <laughs> Dude, I met my history teacher. She didn't know the difference between history and mythology. <laughs> history. I'm like, I'm not listening to her. Fuck archaeology. <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm like, ma'am, you talk to the English teacher in the staff room. No, just understand the difference between those two words. I was like, no, I'll pursue science. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> there can't be opinion behind this. Then I met my science teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the only reason I'm wearing this t-shirt right now is because my biology teacher taught me, label your diagrams. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen those aunties wearing track suits with juicy on the ass? <laughs> That's a biology teacher, aunty. <laughs> it's so nice to see somebody with a hijab going, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is a multicultural guy. That's what comedy is all about. <laughs> oh, four of you clap. We'll do that collectively next time, okay? What the fuck? <laughs> Sir, don't sit like this. You'll never clap for the jokes. Be ready, bro. <laughs> I met my physics teacher, dude. My physics teacher believed in the Mayan calendar. Physics. <laughs> she thought the world was going to end in 2012. Physics. She thought the movie 2012 was based on a documentary. <laughs> She didn't understand the difference between VFX and physics. I couldn't listen to this woman after that, right? She's like, this is because of electromagnetism. I'm like, why? Say the magnets love each other. No, you crazy lady. <laughs> you can say anything you want to. Like, the, the, the well of wisdom has been poisoned, right? She's like, what does that mean? I'm like, you also talk to the English teacher. No, what the fuck is going on in this school, dude? The only thing I remember from chemistry is the difference between ethyl alcohol and methyl alcohol. <laughs> Okay. Some of you don't know what that is. Okay. The, the methyl alcohol is fatal on consumption. Ethyl alcohol is where half my salary goes. Okay. <laughs> right? And the only reason I remember the difference is because my Tamilian chemistry teacher used Tamil Nadu's tradition of dancing in funeral processions to explain the difference. <laughs> He's like, see, ethyl alcohol if you consume, you will dance. <laughs> Methyl alcohol if you consume, others will dance. <laughs> dude, how do you forget that shit, dude? <laughs> uh, I started picking fights with my teachers, dude. At that time, like a lot of like my friends used to like, there was like, it was cool to like streak your hair, like put color in your hair, right? In school at the time that I was growing up. And then one teacher was like, oh, I'm expelling all of you. This is not allowed. I'm writing down a rule. I'm writing down a rule that nobody's allowed to put color in their hair. And I said, ma'am, you had white hair last week. <laughs> <laughs> And the school was like, uh, make him a lawyer. <laughs> make him debate other schools. <laughs> Don't keep him here, right? And so like an idiot, I went to law school also. <laughs> I went and when I was in law school, I got nominated as an international scholar in foreign policy and diplomatic relations. I know. <laughs> First time, I, it took me 14 hours to memorize it also. <laughs> right? And also same reaction. Every time I tell people this, no, it's the same thing. They're like, you're doing this now. <laughs> What went wrong? <laughs> the ending of the story. <laughs> You'll get to know why. As an international scholar, I am part of like 120 people representing 40 different countries. We're going to China to meet the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and go to universities and understand how they teach and implement foreign policy. Okay? I'm a legal scholar. I was 19 and hungover, okay? <laughs> Why lie, okay? Now in my group, I made friends with this six foot by six foot African woman, okay? <laughs> I'm just describing guys, <laughs> right? Her name was, is, she's alive, sorry. <laughs> Her name's uh, Adaba Wale. <laughs> guys. Don't look at me like that. Okay, the uh, is part of her name, okay? That's how you say her name, Adaba Wale, okay? That's her name. And this whole time she's telling us about how China is buying Africa. They own the land, the air, the water, and the Wi-Fi. That's most important, right? No, because without Wi-Fi, how can a fat African convince us that Africa is starving? You need photos, no? Guys, it happens in India also, dude. 
a whole world thinks we are hungry if they come to fat politics like i have never met one guy who's hungry in my life <laughs> we do it guys we wifi is important and one of the off days we go to this mall in beijing and i see my friend going to this jewelry store that's run by this tiny 800 year old chinese lady okay she's 800 <laughs> You know how when you cut down a tree, you count the number of lines, you get the age of the same. I did with her face. <laughs> Minimum 800. Okay. Now, now as soon as as soon as my friend walked in, right? Like she walked into the store. The Chinese lady is just tiny, right? Just tiny, just tiny. She just goes, she. It's worse than you think. I later found out that's Mandarin for <gasps> eclipse. Guys, I didn't say it, dude. What the fuck? She's. Don't look at me like I said it, dude. What the? F she, one clap. What the fuck? Dude? You get ten points, dude. You get ten points. Fuck it, man. Also, I got a little excited because at that time there was this computer simulation of what would happen if Muhammad Ali fought Bruce Lee. Okay, and in my head I'm like, ah, live. <laughs> got to see this negotiation go down right and so my friend ada bawale picks up a ring for her it's a ring for the chinese lady it's a hula hoop okay <laughs> picks up <laughs> picks it up and she goes what is the price of this that's right she's a british accent you racist <laughs> you all thought she sounded different no shame on you do she's been privately educated okay chinese lady replied 5000 yuan cuz she's not been privately educated right it's china it's state sponsored guys <laughs> so she says 5000 yuan my friend goes 500 yuan and i'm like what i thought indians are good at bargaining okay? that that's 10% of asking price right? that's not even factoring in labor cost <laughs> as soon as i said this i realized that i made two very big mistakes okay? first they didn't know i had been watching <laughs> so randomly one brown man jumping going labor cost <laughs> i look like a lunatic okay <laughs> and the second mistake was i just yelled as a man at an african woman and a chinese woman the concept of labor cost oh. <laughs> do it do it you don't understand <laughs> do that computer simulation never said what would happen if ali and lee teamed up <laughs> dude i got the shit kicked out of me okay <laughs> I, I always I got the shit. How ironic, no? That I had to go all the way to China for my eyes to open. <laughs> oh man, you didn't clap at that joke. You're anti-national. Okay? <laughs> Red team, get them. No. <laughs> Became a lawyer also, and uh, my legal career was doomed from the starting only. <laughs> beginning i realized that do do get me wrong i had a great job great boss at the madras high court loved working for that man but the same week that he hired me he also adopted a stray puppy <laughs> and i couldn't help but feel that we were both being domesticated simultaneously <laughs> like we were both being house trained right? like he told me to wear a tie every day which is the human collar and leash right like one day my mistake i got taken for a walk it happened okay <laughs> with the dog and me same games fetch for the dog stick for me files i am running around court okay one guy is timing me also like wow he's getting faster i'm like this bastard okay <laughs> guess worst do that bitch that's biological <laughs> that bitch saw me as competition so every day where she sit at work she used to come and like just piss there like marking her territory <laughs> and then look at me was like what are you going to do about it right And the only reason she stopped doing that is when I went and started pissing. When she sits everywhere, I'm like, "What are you going to do about it?" <laughs> I felt that vibe change, guys. I know this, okay? You felt that? I know, I know. I I've been doing this joke for a while. I know that more people prefer dogs to comedians. Calm down, okay? <laughs> Don't call Peeta. I did not. So you did one clap only. Fine, I'll take it. What? <laughs> one and he stopped. He's like, "Yeah, correct only." <laughs> oh shit. It's weird, man. It's it's like I, I'd be like I'm in this existen existential crisis, right? Like, am I a dog or am I a lawyer? <laughs> right? and, and then and then be these asshole uncles who be like, what's the difference? Oh, I <laughs> and then I'll only be like, dogs are loyal. What do you want? Like, fuck, I can't do the jokes, dude. 
<laughs> the story gets sadder, dude. Like that first day in court, dreamt of being a lawyer. I get to court. My boss tells his colleagues I adopted a stray puppy. They all looked at me. <laughs> dude, one of them pat me on my head. I had to be clean shaven. One of them did this. He's like, who's a good boy? I'm like. <laughs> Dude, one of them said, you're so lucky he's throwing you a bone. I'm like, hey, I'm not the bitch, dude. What the fuck? There's another one in the house. And the story gets even sadder, dude. <laughs> you already have some of the details. I had to wear a suit every day. I had to be clean shaven, comb my hair. I wear glasses and my first name is Arnav. Dude, I couldn't look at myself in the mirror, okay? It was hard. <laughs> like, uh, yes. Like when I'm brushing my teeth, I was like, just, dude, one day I had to turn around when a judge yelled, hey, go on me. <laughs> dude, I literally was like, my lord, call me a bitch instead. No, just. That man has done to my name what Adolf did to all other Adolfs, okay? <laughs> dude, I know I can stand here and be like, mine's V and his is B, but that's like 30,000 Nazis in fucking Germany in 1945 going like, mine's PH, his is F. <laughs> doesn't work. And I leave you guys with this because that's what I realized, man. Uh, I needed lesser comedy in my life, so I quit dealing with the Indian judiciary. <laughs> and that is how I became a comedian, guys. That's been my time. Thank you guys so much for listening. Give it up your host one more time. Yeah. Sir, where are you? Sir, 